How's it going, everybody? Welcome back to Talking with Dean. It's a new show, you know, whatever. I'm here talking with video game people. What <laughs> do you mean by that? Well, these guys are in a video game. It's called The Untouchable. What? Yes, and here I have Mallory Woods and Francis Panita. How's it going, gentlemen? Good, it's going great. It's going great. Great. Man, I never thought I'd interview video game people. I, I stop me if that's if that's bad. No, not at all. You guys were in the video game. How does it feel? Perhaps I'll defer to you first. Uh, oh, all right. Well, it, it, it was good, instructor. Right? Oh yeah. Well, <laughs> so so this game. Um, so you're right. There aren't a lot of actual video game people because you know they're usually just you know. Uh, stylized characters that are that are developed and you know obviously you know when Mortal Kombat came out they're like oh let's take real people and let's let's make them into into characters well the untouchable did the same thing mm -hmm. and uh so the untouchable took real people but we actually they took real martial artists digitized them did all of our moves and stuff like that so um and it was great i mean you know it's 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 interesting because you know i i I'm a child of the eighties and I grew up playing all these video games and, and next thing you know, like, Oh, check it out. That's me. And you know, we would always joke, you know, too amongst each other. It's like, Oh, all right. Oh, Mallory beat me up. And now <laughs> I get to beat up, you know, so-and-so and let's get Carmichael. And it's pretty cool, you know, and, and, um, to actually put a, a character into, you know, a, 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 into a real person. Interesting. Surreal. Definitely at first, you know, especially when, you know the game started getting big and and we saw we saw ourselves on uh in magazine ads and and in the video arcade and and uh uh you know we filmed a commercial i mean it was it was it was something it was pretty cool it was pretty cool it's it's you know to kind of to follow up on that it's uh it's funny the, the cool part is great but it did involve a lot of work there was a lot of things there was a learning curve literally uh and a big shout out to travis riggs who's the creator and producer of Creative, Creative Edge Studios and who gave us uh, some of the content that I sent you, sent you behind the scenes and everything. Um, it was a learning curve when you don't inherently know how to create a video game like this. Like, how do you do it? You know, what do you do? And Travis had been in video production for, you know, a, a long time. He's also a tech nerd and everything. So he knows a lot about technology, but when the idea came to like, how do we shoot a video game? How do we do this? Um, you know, how, how, you, th there was a, literally starting from scratch but he figured out, you know, literally cracked the code and had us going in there. There were a lot of things, and most people may not know there were two Untouchables. There was the Untouchable <laughs> 1, and there was the Untouchable 2. Unfortunately, I think there were some uh, key uh, issues in terms of getting the sequel out. But in terms of the technology we used for the sequel, it was so much better. Uh, we were in a warehouse that we had painted uh, <laughs> green. So... Like perfect technology. This is a green screen behind me. You can see it between my fingers. But we were trying to figure out the perfect angle for the camera and the lighting that was needed and what speed you could move at. A lot of times we were doing our techniques and, you know, uh, Travis would be sitting back there like, hey, can we do that? Can we do it slower? And in martial arts, you always thought to do it fast, fast, fast. And then now you've been, been told to do it slow. It's like, well, I'm throwing this leg up. It's kind of tough to do it slow. But you had to find out how to do things like that. The sequel allowed us to move it real time, and it actually allowed the hardware to automatically cookie cut us out. The Untouchable One, all of that animation you see was cut out by hand by some very talented artist. Mm -hmm. But it was, I mean, this was, it was really cool. You know, you had a lot of my friends there, you know, Francis, who's actually my instructor. Francis taught me uh, Taekwondo and... He also taught me how to snowboard. Another another fun <laughs> fact there too. So, uh, but you know, going to him uh, to to actually learn everything, and I think I'm one of your very few uh, students who fought. Uh, you know, in terms yeah. of uh, fighting and winning, you know, uh, tournaments, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, mm -hmm. You know, out there. Okay. But it's it was it was really cool and different experience. Yeah. So Francis is like, uh, is he your senpai or sensei or? Uh, well, so we have instructor, uh, senpai would be, senpai is Japanese, if I remember right, Francis? Yeah. Am I right on that? Mm -hmm. I was saying, if I, if I have my terminology right, sen, sensei, senpai. Um, so, so he, here's our, here's our history. Yeah, here's let's history. take it back. Right. <laughs> so if we take it back, Way like, back. um, I actually, uh, Mallory and I know each other 
like pre martial arts back in the Commodore 64 BBS days. And I actually, I actually, at the time I had a BBS called the dojo and my alias was the karate kid. And, um, anyway, kind of through the whole, through the whole, uh, gaming scene. Um, we were in high school at the time we met each other and I, I hacked a couple games and we traded and stuff like that. We just kind of got to know each other in that, in that small community. You know, this is, all pre-internet. This is all through modems and this and that. And uh, Mallory was Shadow Knight, and I was I was the Karate Kid. Um, so anyway, we were really good friends through through gaming. And then um, he went to Bowie State University, correct? And I opened a school in Glendale, Maryland, which was close to there. Mm-hmm. And um, I I'd, I'd been teaching martial arts. Uh, since I was like assisting 15, 16, 17 years old, I ran a school. Um, and he, since he was so close, he went ahead and he started taking classes from me. So, um, I started him off and, uh, he learned some weapons. He, he was, yeah, I mean, he was a great student, you know? Um, I eventually stuck with that school. I, I actually taught there all through, um, through high school and through a couple of years of college. And then it got to the point where I had to let it go. Cause I was, uh, I was uh, trying to get into med school and classes were getting hard. Um, and then Mallory went on and he, he finished his journey. And then he actually became a very, uh, very uh, accomplished fighter on, on the circuit. But I was, yeah, I was, I was his first instructor. Um, but we were, again, we were, we were friends before then. And then fast forward again, somehow, and I probably heard about the game through, through you because you knew Travis. Correct. I was like, oh, yeah, I want to get involved. So I, I sent Travis a bunch of pictures and stuff like that and um, um, offered my services as a choreographer. So I helped to kind of put some of the stuff together. And and then, especially for the first game, I, I, uh, I supplied a lot of the talent too. That's right. Um, so, because he wanted to do real martial artists. And at the time, I had some close connections and some students um, also that were, that were uh, great competitors. So to, to show to also just if you think of this as it, I see the Marvel posters and a branch of the timeline uh, <laughs> when I was in school, uh, when I was in Bowie State, uh, Francis had mentioned before Star Trek, I was trying to catch up on Star Trek because I missed a bunch in my first two years, my uh, freshman and sophomore year. So my junior year is when I started martial arts and I was catching up and I saw on, ah oh man, it was a BBS. It was a BBS. <laughs> And, I, and we're in Amiga 500 2000 territory uh, because that's what I used all through college. And I saw someone that posted, hey, does anyone have any uh, high quality uh, VHS, that was the technology at the time, tapes of Star Trek? I'm making a game. And there's this guy named Espionage. And I started talking <laughs> to him and that's Travis. So I was like, "That's Travis." I was like, uh, hey, I've got a rack of tapes of uh, stuff I'm catching up on. I said, I'll bring them to you. Where are you at? He's in, I'm in Herndon, Virginia. So I actually drove out one night from Bowie State. Uh, all the way to Hernan's Ooh, well. That's an hour. And, and uh, I bring him these tapes. And we just started talking. We just sat down and we're talking like, hey, do you know such and such? And we find out we know some of the same people through their aliases, like the Karate Kid, uh, Espionage, uh, this guy. And, and he was into BBSing too. And he was like, hey, it's always been my um, objective to make a, a, a martial arts Term. game. Uh-huh. And, and it just starts. It started flowing from there. Eventually, he got to the point where he was able to small uh, world yeah just start and make this game and as francis mentioned he was plugged in he got the carmichael simon who was also another student of his who was one of the absolute goats in terms of sport karate history in terms yeah. of everything he had john of valera who john is with uh 87 is 87 11 stunt group who john uh, blew I, up I, man he's, he's he literally i went to interview him one day and I said, John, I, I'd like to, you know, take a half hour interview. He says, listen, I just rolled off a set from there. I'm having Christmas with my daughters in November because I'm spending most of the December uh, doing John Wick too. And I got to go to Morocco tomorrow. So <laughs> this guy was literally, I mean, he is one of those guys now that is behind the scenes doing stunts and directing stuff. So this talent group, I mean, that's just, yeah. just a drop in the bucket, just a taste. We haven't even gotten a Cynthia Rothrock or, or, right. um, or uh, Larry Lamb, Larry Lamb, or mm-hmm. I mean, just just David and Douglas, L- David Arnold Douglas, Sean. Larnell Stovall, who directs Teen Titans episodes and everything. You know, it's th- there's so much talent in that game. You know, that's uh, 
that just just really has been untouched in the untouchable that you could talk about. <laughs> no pun intended. No pun intended. Oh, look Should at we... this. This looks like a gallery of people. This was from the sequel. But Oh, I think I know what picture this is. Without that is the who's who right there. Huh. Right. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, man. Uh, I see you I mean, in the cut, Mallory. I was looking for you. <laughs> oh, yeah. See in the back. That's right. It's looking all sneaky. The, hey, the stuff boat, man. That's what. That's what X was. It's. It's funny if you were actually looking at this photo. Uh, David Douglas with with the brown hat on. Oh, he's in like every. He, he's in commercial every commercial. He, he's. I would say he's the safe black guy to cast because he he, he's, he he was in a State Farm commercial. He was in uh, last year's Super Bowl commercial about play it safe with Tracy Morgan. Like if you want to play it safe, you do this that and the other. David Douglas is in that. Uh, I mean, you've got. You've got so Arnold Chung is kneeling with the orange um, uh, wraps around his uh, shin. Yeah. Arnold was another great forms competitor. He literally is in Hawaii now. I go there next week, and I was like, "Hey, you, you like right where I'm going to be? Are you going to be there on Monday?" And he's like, "No, I got to go out. I got to corner Uriah Hall for a boxing match that he's going to do uh, <laughs> this weekend." <laughs> he works with a bunch of MMA guys. Uh, I, yeah. I got to give a shit. <laughs> Cynthia Rothrock right in the middle. Uh, yeah, you know uh, yeah. she. She did that right after having a kid. Yes. If I remember right. Yes. Yeah. What about the guy with the flamboyant attire on? Way to the left. Ah, uh, way to the left. In the uh, green? In the green? What was oh, his wow. name? I'm trying to remember his name. <laughs> did an interesting No, not right. the green, the flamboyant attire with the hat and the Oh, that's David Douglas. That's David Douglas. That's David Douglas. That's yeah. Double D. That's David Douglas. Yeah, oh. he was uh he was very well known on the circuit. Very amazing martial arts, but he he kind of hit it big. Um I mean, he's he's on screen. I mean, he's yeah, what he's, is he's on like what is it, a Kia or a Subaru or he's on these commercials all I'm the time. Like, oh, is he? Stuff. Okay. Uh, I'll definitely, you know, for follow up and to give you to give you some links for other content, I can send you some stuff. Of, uh, I never saw the same David Douglas form twice. He always did something. Yeah, new he was innovative. he was amazing. Uh, absolutely okay. incredible. Well, hey, going back to the game itself, yeah. how many would you say like putting, you know, how many hours did you put in the day just doing <laughs> posing? Oh my gosh! <laughs> how long does that take to get the right? I know you got to go through at least so, 40, right? <laughs> so it, so there's a couple of things and to film you this because you had to be able to do both sides, right? Mm -hmm. So you had to be very symmetrical. So, so some of the outfits had to be kind of adjusted so that you were the same down the middle. Mm -hmm. So you weren't too much on one side because, you know, you're fighting this side and you're fighting that side. You have to look the same. Right. So a we perfect, had to make to, to, just a, a perfect example of that is Arnold's. He's got some scripting writing down his left side uh, right there. He would have to have the same on the other side of the shirt. Right. Well, it's because when he turned, it would be yeah. like. So that's just, a, you know, to really just wrap that up, show you that was something that had to happen. Yeah. And, and, and I mean, you wanted to make sure that so you ever had to have a fighting stance uh, like this yeah. where you just that way your idle stance, you're just kind of doing the same thing. Right. Mm -hmm. So that you do your moves and then you come back to that. You do your moves and you come back to that. So, but again, it had to be almost exact so they could loop it. Right. right? Yeah. So you had to do a punch, come right back to that. Do a kick, come right back to that. It was, it was, uh, so that took a lot of repetition. And, um, I mean, if anything, that's part of what, what I, what I had to choreograph is to make sure that they were able to do a sweep and then come right back to the stance and, and going right back to exactly where you were, especially after doing a jump or whatever that, that was kind of challenging. I mean, that, that took some time for One sure. One thing to mention on that, if you think of um, an X, Y plane, so you go and do, you know, tornado kick. If you got closer to the camera, you would get bigger just as my hand is getting bigger. Mm -hmm. So you had to make sure you stayed on the same line. Imagine trying to do every move, but staying just like on a balance beam. So that if you're moving forward, if you're moving this way, it's fine. But if you go backwards, you get smaller. If you go forward, you get bigger. You had to really adjust for that. And a lot of times someone would do the perfect move and they would try to land it and they would forget to go back to their stance. And it's like, we can't use that. You got to do it over. Yep. And over and over again. And let's not forget, you're under, um, I do believe Travis got some like industrial lights. And those lights were hot. You're oh. sweating. You were literally sweating bullets underneath there. And <laughs> I was like, what? Yeah. 
I was like, why did they bother put makeup on us? <laughs> <laughs> we just sweating it off. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, and, and after a while, you think about it. After a while, if you did a move in which you did a sweep, and you you need to, so you're laying down, you got swept, you're laying down. Now you have to get up off the ground, right? But after you've laid down on the ground, you started to sweat in that specific spot. And now trying to get up is kind of hazardous because you're slipping, you're falling, you're, you're tripping. And this is concrete. It's very unforgiving. Yeah. So a lot of, a lot so of challenges. Could you guys do uh, flat back bumps all day? or Once we saw, I would say this. So you were responsible for the moves. You know, everybody was there like, hey, do what's best for you. Like, for example, I'm a, I, I fight right, I, say, I fight southpaw, I fight with my right side forward. So I did all my strength stuff so that my right leg, uh, you know, is best could show off that. When it came to the left, I just, just, just prayed and prayed and winged it. <laughs> but when we saw that if you had to do a drop fall and if you land, you know, like this, but you really saw how hard that concrete was if somebody went before you, and then you really might reevaluate what you planned on doing. It's yeah. like, uh, maybe I don't want to do that because that splat sounded kind of hard. Yeah, so, and with you guys saying earlier, like you had to go slow and everything, well, and I don't know what kind of cameras were being used where it caught like 120 per second. Or The, the first game <clears throat> only had, didn't the, the first game only have one camera? It was what it was one fixed camera one fixed camera the second game had, had, a, had a jib he had a jib yeah mm -hmm. he had a jib yeah man it yeah but it's um there were some times where you would do something and you would consider like uh maybe i shouldn't do this it's a little bit risky in fact um <laughs> yeah uh harry who has on the uh yellow jacket in the upper right hand corner of this picture harry um um, he was doing a kind of a, a whip leg takedown, kind of like a um, uh, where he's where he's looping around. Ah, that that that's a much younger me. <laughs> a much younger me, way pre gray. Um, yeah, this is when we were on the behind that green screen there. <laughs> yeah, and, and, and like imagine, like I would not be able to do that today. Trying to hold that, it would, my kneecaps would shoot off. Oh, would, man. oh really, Ooh. man? Oh yeah, my knees are not. Dude, hold on. Much. What year was this game? Uh, they said it came out in 2000. Came out in 2000, but we, we filmed it in the 90s. We oh, we yeah. filmed it in the 90s. No, it was 95 because I first cut my hair in 1995 and I said, forget it. I'm not growing hair anymore. I just, I just, <laughs> that was it. That was it. The last, last time I had hair. So this game was being made on in 95 and came out in 2000. That's okay. Yep. Uh, one unique thing about this game. Um, yeah. It said the box actually says 98. Or Windows yeah. 98 or just 19? No, 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 1998, okay. Creative Edge. Um, but the thing about this game is this was actually known as the first fighting game on Mac. Yes. Um, right. Because it, it had like the Mac, you know, the Mac OS. And it, it's right here. It says like accelerated for for Power Mac. Yeah. Um, and yeah, there were there were no martial arts games for Mac at all. So yeah, we were in um, the Mac World magazine and full page ad and everything it was a it was the first game for mac so the initial platform was on mac <clears throat> and then it was also ported over to uh pc mm -hmm. and then i guess this is the pc box right mal yeah yep or windows windows 95 and windows 98 <laughs> yes <Yep. laughs> this one's still shrink wrap dude yeah i still got mine mine's still shrink wrap too and um <clears throat> and, and then it was ported onto a um uh, stand up game. And I think, let me think if, let me see if I can remember this properly. It was, it was out the same time Mortal Kombat four. I think it would have been three or four. Three or four came out. And it actually had rated higher because, well, one thing I think they said uh, Mortal Kombat was too violent. Mm -hmm. at the time it was like it was, a, it was just way too you know and that's that's what it's known for right but this was more appealing to a broader range of players um plus with the martial artists and and the 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 better realism um it actually had caught on so i don't you know i don't know if it's like an official better than mortal Kombat or if it was just kind of like a, a player's choice kind of mm -hmm. thing but um i just remember when travis told us that i was i was kind of flabbergasted i was like wow that's cool 
right? Because Mortal Kombat was, I mean, that was the GOAT back yeah, then. Right. Of, that, yeah. that, was, that was what you wanted to do. Fighting games. And we did, and didn't, um, and Travis took us to a local arcade. Yeah, when we saw. That's right, where, where, where the game was was there. Yeah, when um, we saw it, I was like, wow, that's cool. Oh, like, you saw the cabinet the, all lit up and everything? We saw the cabinet, oh, yeah. and it had the, the it had the con sidekick on the side of the cabinet. It was oh, something else. Okay. That that was uh, that is absolutely true. One of the where's that, that in your office? Do, where's the? <laughs> yeah, where, where's, where's the cool stuff? <laughs> Actually, Travis still has that in his basement. He still has it. He still has he still it in his basement. It. One of the things that. I did with Travis is there was a, um, I'd never heard of this before because I wasn't in that industry, but he said, Hey, uh, do you want to come with me to Atlanta? We're going to go to a video game show and down here you can go and, um, you could buy or, you know, uh, rent cabinet games. So like if you own a Chuck E. Cheese, you could go down there and say, Oh, this, these new, new York games are coming out. Um, but you could also buy games like, um, there would be sit down games like, Mario Kart, where you would sit down or you would like ride a horse or you would do this, that, and the other. So it was this big convention center. All the floor are just all video games. It's something like I had always dreamed of. And I remember I would get there for the convention early. And for the first hour, there would be no uh, customers coming in, but everything was on free play. So I like got through House of the Dead one or two. <laughs> it's just, just playing because, you know, I'm sitting here. We had a booth there. Creative Edge Software had a booth. And I was in character so that people could kind of come by and take pictures and everything else. Um, and fortunately for X, all that was was a black tank top and some black pants and <laughs> black shoes. That was it. And, oh, shades and, and the shades. That, and the that's shades. all. I didn't have to do anything else. Uh, if the friends was down there, he'd be bare chested all day. You know, um, <laughs> this con outfit soaked so, in oil. Soaked in oil, right? <laughs> <laughs> that, see, that, see, you also didn't know that. That's Body also oil. Uh. I, I didn't apply anything old to him. Just to, <laughs> that right, you know. um, but it was kind of cool because people would come by and they would say, you know, when can we buy this? So who, who's it going to be distributed by uh, through and everything else? So that was kind of cool to go to. Um, and I don't even know how long has E3 been going on? How many years is it? It would be oh gosh, like it's a while. But that, I that, couldn't that tell you. You could go to and view and see um, games that are coming out and everything else like that. So that was that was real cool to do. Um, we also went to um, uh, there's a tournament in New York where we had a lot of the cast go to. Um, oh, was it a fighting wanna, tournament? It was a fighting tournament, and I yes, want to say yes, okay. it was Empire. Empire State Nationals, uh, off the top of my mind, Joey Santa Maria, if I'm right, Francis. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Empire. So we went there. John, John Blair, John won. Uh, he actually used um, the opening song from Untouchable for his. Oh, music. that's right. And he that's and he right. literally, you know, he's got his music. He's going to go out there and do a swarm. And Travis said, "Hey, anybody a chance? Would you be able to switch it with this song?" And John listens to it. He's like, he, he's doing his form. He's like. Yeah, I can make this yep. work. All right, just, I can make it just work. I literally just changed it on the fly and goes and does it and wins. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, but that's just how talented he, he is. If like you go look him up, John J O N V A L E R A. I'm looking at his IMDb page. Oh yeah, yeah, that's the main guy right on the poster and everything. Correct. He was the untouchable. He was the boss. Yep. Yes, he was the boss. The boss. Yes, uh, yes. Just just to name a few. Uh, 2023 stunts for Aquaman and Lost Kingdom. Stunt coordinator for Blue Beetle. Stunt for Sweet Girl. Stunt fight coordinator for John Wick Three. You know, like uh, yeah. Doing and utility stunts. Travis, for th was this his baby? Because it's like producer, cinematography, mm -hmm. casting. Mm -hmm. yep. Yeah, Tra yep. Travis had a vision. Uh, he from having that technology background and also having. The uh, background in videography, he had the best of both worlds. And, you know, he he saw it through to the end. He also, uh, as you know, it's it's late for us, but uh, I probably could call Travis right now. He's probably up. He's I probably up. He, he, he probably is a hard worker. Like two, three in the morning every night. Uh, just, and, you know, takes one night to crash yeah. and just uh, go to sleep. All right. Hold on. I got something because uh, hit the, the power <laughs> of having uh zoom and also having multiple screens and oh. being able to share the screens is to be able to embarrass people oh boy oh. Oh. I, mallory I woods is. versus jason holmes 2005 that is in the battle of atlanta battle of atlanta and here That's we right. have mallory woods in the black actually that you're wearing uh charlie charlie lee working for charlie i was uh, i was teaching for charlie lee at that time mm -hmm. and yeah just uh going and do my thing Boom. actually i remember doing this match <laughs> Jason and I elbowed each other accidentally right in the eyeball, man. It, it I mean, right in your, um, right in the cheekbone. Uh, there's going to be a clash, and we both are just like, man. That hurt. I look over at him. Is, uh, Did you get that? 
She had I think two. I did. Yes. Yeah, should have got the sidekick. There's Charlie actually centering the judge. I'm surprised nobody had a problem with me uh, fighting with his logo on the back. Oh. I'm center judging. Well, I mean, he is the commissioner of NASCAR. You know? <laughs> he would call it straight. I, I, I do know that. Um, yeah, this was uh, on stage. Yep. And um, let me see. I think. <laughs> yeah, because if you fell down or if you uh, if you fell down or if you went out of bounds, you automatically got a, a point. Oh. Okay, so I win that. Boom. Yeah, kind of like was, sumo wrestling, huh? <laughs> uh, point fight is a little bit different. It's you know, really like the first to 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 hit, and then judges have to call and agree. What, so it's all that thing. Yeah, when I when I teach when I teach point like to to kind of explain it to my students, I say it's like it's like fencing. Yep. Right. That's a great analogy. Very specific strikes and very specific areas that you can strike. Um, and then after that, it's, it's, it's like fencing. It's like a game of tag. Oh, Boom. Fencing. So it's, okay. It, yes. Yeah. Fencing, fencing. Yes. So it's, it's not a full contact, but it is based a lot more on speed, mm -hmm. right? You've got to be fast. Right. Um, and don't get me wrong. I mean, you know, point fighters are hard hitters and, and in the black belt division contact, I mean, you can hit you hard have to make contact. You have to make contact, <clears throat> but yeah. And, in, in, uh, point fighting, it's a very speed based, um the very strategic uh type of fighting so yeah yeah you can so uh, one of the yeah. things also is that when you do learn that specific style for fighting is that you don't want to be touched whatsoever so when you get guys that learn how to fight like that and then they actually go on to more more professional style it usually gives a lot of people fits because you're not there when they throw techniques if mm -hmm. you look up uh raymond daniels who's probably one of the best known point fighters uh, that was out there. He's fighting for karate combat now, but he's fought for glory. He's fought for um, Bellator MMA and Bellator kickboxing. Got a belt in Bellator kickboxing. Oh, Mallory Woods, you've you uh, fought Raymond before. You fought Raymond in two thousand. Raymond, yes, I have. Dang. Um, the, look, <laughs> Dean, you 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 YouTube Mallory. I'm looking at like I don't know twenty thirty videos well, of, of. I was Mallory. YouTubing Mallory, and I got some good stuff, but. You know, I'm not saying it wasn't good stuff that I saw either. Yeah. Hey, 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 we'll get into that. But, um...